My balls. Connected to Facebook, it says, or so it says. Mm -hmm. Folks, as you start to hear and see, as you start to join us in this space, this hour that we have sliced out of the craziness of the day to day, would you tell me if you can hear this me? This hour that we have torn from the space time continuum. We have torn it. Hey, guess who is here? This spare an hour we have nurtured from the we pallid sands of time. We have. We've... I bet somebody named Sean is here. Um, I have yet to see a Sean, but I do see what? a Nicholas. We Morrow. can't start without a Sean. You know, both Shans will be here. If the instant that we say, any, oh, yep, there's a Sean. There's a Sean. Never mind. I lied. See, Hi, Sean. There we go. Okay, good. Now um, we're official. One we Sean. We left Sean behind. Yeah, no right. Sean no behind. Sean's left behind. No, no, no. Sean's Can will not be left behind. Yeah, I'm asking. Oh, we can hear you all. Oh, okay. And we all sound good? We don't sound like robots? I mean, we can fix that. Right. Oh, both Sean's are here. Nice. Right. See, there we go. We're good to go. You know, if there's not a David body in the audience, then, you know, you don't got nobody. Produce the body. You got no body. Produce the body. Uh, <laughs> Nicholas is here. Nicholas, I, I gotta tell you, my friend, you are a consistent delight. Um, always happy to have you in the audience. Okay. Um, you know, funnily enough, I am not... Uh, you wouldn't be the first person who said, Troy, maybe turn your volume down. Uh, mm. Usually I don't have a mic, and they're like, do you think you need a mic? And I'm just shopping for groceries. Of course, I need a mic when I'm shopping for groceries. How are they going to hear me? Mm -hmm. You have a mic, and they're like, "Sir, this is Arby's." <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, I just want to sing. Like that is that is for orders, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please stop. <laughs> please stop singing into the drive-thru speaker. Listen to this. Um, you know what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn that music down you know it just comes it comes with uh with the bass where you know the bass is just kind of all over the place uh but as we are um uh, i am i'm having a problem friends here's the problem i accidentally saw um that fennec fox it's in my art. Now my whole you know that you ped when you were in Japan or whatever. Oh yes. Everybody, hello, welcome to Mutants and Masterminds Monday. I am your friend. Friend? Friend. Friend. Uh, disembodied voice of Troy, and we are hanging out yet again, as we all love to do during this time on Mondays, with Crystal Frazier. Hi, Crystal. And Steve Kenson. And uh, and all of you, all of you, look at all of you. Uh, you're all here. Everybody's here. You know, we are missing a couple people that I'm going to have to reach out to. Just because I like to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from you for a minute. But um, yeah, Jacob's here. Uh, Nicholas, you're here. Uh, a full house. Wow. Uh, wow. There's a lot of people. Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. so, thanks for dropping best, by. Yeah, thanks for dropping by. And stick wow. around because we've got lots of good stuff to talk about. Um, you know, this is Mutants and Masterminds Monday where we talk about Mutants and Masterminds. And uh, you know, maybe a shenanigan or two, perhaps. Awesome. Yeah. So, what are we doing today? We got a lot going on. Uh, I mean, first we are celebrating a milestone over on the Ooh. Patreon. Can you believe it? Yeah. I I knew we'd get there. Yeah. I did I too. Mean, this, this first five hundred dollar goal is where you start getting like added value for your your Patreon buck. Mm -hmm. So I knew we'd get there eventually. <clears throat> So this Absolutely. is this is the tier where you start getting all new material. Yeah, some good stuff too. So what are the materials? Um, which is French for material. <laughs> well, we don't produce French materials. That's the work of our <laughs> French translator, Emmanuel. Weird. We have mm -hmm. a, a French translator. We do. Oh, yeah, we have we a, tel a translators in many languages. Très bon. Oh yes, mutants and masterminds is now available in 
let's say 60 languages across 300 countries <laughs> i assume that's a that's a, sure. I would no I, I think it's just i think it's just french and italian it might Pain. be spanish as well and the other you know 299 languages um yeah so what are so we crossed that 500 <clears throat> and it was so weird we, we get real close and then the algorithm would adjust our our mm -hmm. uh, you know mm -hmm. overall like and then there were fees and things so we we really kind of surpassed that five hundred dollar mark but Patreon lets you know when that happens and then boom we did and next one seven fifty yeah. but this has unlocked some goodies well really for everyone mm -hmm. yeah uh, I mean first of all it's going to unlock the basic updated stats uh, for everybody those are going to start appearing on the Ronin round tables. Uh, two weeks after they appear on the Patreon. Uh, so, you know, everybody gets a crack at updated stat blocks. Uh, but if you want exclusive content for your money, uh, we are going to start producing articles about Earth Prime. Mm -hmm. Now, very specifically, you're going to be focusing on <clears throat> actual, like kind of fleshing out actual businesses and things or? Yep, businesses, mm -hmm. locations, personalities, uh, I mean, lots, all kinds of little different ideas. If Patreons have suggestions for what they'd like mm -hmm. to hear about uh, about the setting, yeah, let us know in the comments. Absolutely. And then will uh, some some people I, who are I will I will share that I think my first bit of interesting lore for Emerald City is going to be the Long Alley, which is a weird, supernatural, vaguely fey thing in the city. So if you're having mystical adventures or you just want to take your heroes on a weird mystical side quest for the cryptid clans, then this will be a fun location. Mm. This is so funny. Jordan Sounds Taylor like just said, no one translates into Fey, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> just they're talking about something totally different. So mm. see, Jordan. Well, the problem is license or the Fey are notorious. The Fey are notoriously bad at licensing agreements. That's true. Yes. That's true. Or unfortunately all too good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just a little too, you know, the negotiations are a little hardcore. Yeah, um, you'll sign away all your rights for a handful of acorns and six drops of newborn blood. Right. I'm always afraid to just blurt out these words that I see. Um, but uh, <laughs> Nicholas says, Dakanal? Dakanal? Not, not, uh, not wait, it's with a D, not a B. Um, oh, I was like, but, I know what a Bacchanal, Bacchanal is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know too. what a Bacchanal is. Who is the current white lion? Okay, Nicholas, are you like trying to activate a sleeper agent here? What's happening? Mm -hmm. Who is the current white lion? <clears throat> asks. Oh, talk about the white lion in uh, Atlas, Atlas of Earth Prime. Prime. <laughs> Everyone's excited. Um, it would be fun to do some more stuff with Dakana. It would. It would be amazing. Oh, in case you a little bit in uh, Nether War, but not mm -hmm. a lot. Owen oh, Casey Stevens, um, the uh, star of Stage and Screen and Thursday mm -hmm. with Owen Casey. Are you saying Owen, the Owen Casey Stevens, it's, the nicest man in gaming, is watching it. us right now? He is watching right. us right now, and he says, "Patrons and Praetorians, I like it." <laughs> yeah. Read up above, Troy Hewitt. You, you and, read up above. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, also, we we listened to your feedback about what you wanted from the Patreon, so we are going to release mm -hmm. a an article specifically updating whatever team we're translating that month with a sort of where are they now retrospective. Mm -hmm. I so, may have already written the first draft of one. <gasps> nice. Is it someone? Steve is on the ball. We we've know. Only had, we've only been like over the finish line on this for like six hours. <laughs> That's true. Honestly, that is so true. <laughs> Steve, you have this, it's, it's like preternatural kind of, you know, ability to just sort of like put the genius you've got packed into your brain and onto paper in such a smooth sort of frictionless way. You're like, ta-da, here's that thing I just said I would do. It's is remarkable. Is that true, Steve? Do you not have much friction in your brain? Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wish I had a little less. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, as compared to um, mere mortals uh, like myself, your brain mm -hmm. appears to be very well lubricated. Sean Duggan says, <laughs> Thank you. who is going that's, to... <laughs> that's one of the nicest things anyone's ever said. <laughs> There's a t-shirt idea for you, yeah, everyone. <laughs> I think, I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that needs some, we need to kind of work that do some workshop with that uh, we'll, sean, we'll workshop that a little we will we will sean duggan says uh 
Uh, Sean, what did you say? Everyone's talking so fast. Um, don't stop talking, but uh, <laughs> I love it. Was going to mention Nether War beat me to it this time, Crystal. This time, <laughs> he shakes his fist in the air. Nicholas says, uh, Pook, we got to get more info on uh, Daka Nal. I'm We need a timeline, new tech, new powers, and uh, Dakana specific baddies. Um, well, I guess oh, we... Daka Nal, like a celebration of Dakana. <gasps> hmm. Okay. Well, well, what is the Dakana? Oh. Uh, Dakana is a uh, a small, uh, highly advanced nation uh, in Africa um, that uh, is the source of the uh, mystic, uh, mythical Daka crystals. Uh, that are uh, useful for all kinds of mad science uh, all over the world. Yeah, just about all the the mad science in Earth Prime uses Daka crystals the same way most of the mad science in Marvel uses vibranium. Yeah, uses vibranium. Mm -hmm. I can't. Uh, you know, so Apuk is uh, giving me the business because I can't read. Um, and <laughs> that is very true. It's just, um, you know, that I get hit with so much genius in a day and it gets a little <laughs> overwhelming. Um, but let's see, uh, David, You're hanging out Body. with new people. <laughs> David, <laughs> David Body says, wow, I'm just <laughs> speechless right now. Was it the brain lube? Is that what did it? Um, let's mm -hmm. see. Thank you, Steve. And, um, that's from Nicholas says, thank you. And, uh, Sean Duggan says, Troy, it's Wakanda. Okay. Okay. I get it. <clears throat> now I get it. Um, I love it. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, and listen, you chatters. Do you hear that dog? The dog senses you're you're uh, giving me the business. It's gonna get you. It's gonna herd you right off a cliff. I like. She's it a watchdog. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, wow, we just processed a lot of information there. Um, mm -hmm. a question from I believe it's Sean. Sean, let me get back to your question. Um about uh, the cadence for, for content. Now, we, we know that we're gonna do some exclusive chat at some point uh, here for the hero and the, um, uh, uh, what is it, prime, hero and prime tier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, Sean says, quick clarification for my flitting brain. I do appreciate when Sean's like, I'm going to state this in a very polite way. <laughs> Which is a nice way of saying you forgot to thank. I'm, I'm joking, John. Uh, are the roundtable releases two weeks, two, two weeks or two months delayed from the Patreon release? It's two weeks. Uh, should be two weeks. Yeah. Do we have it listed as something else? No, uh, no, no, no. I think Sean Did was I... just uh, was curious. Mm -hmm. um, hey, we need, to, we need to schedule the first roundtable like video chat with all of our yeah. How do we want to do that? Primes here. Yeah. Supporters. Yeah, do we want to do like Indeed. a um, sort of a webinar and then invite folks to come hang out with us, you know, in that sort of closed ecosystem and we can maybe record it and share it later if we like yeah. what we said? Okay. Um, hey, guess what? DT what? Sketch Buccino is here and he shares, Crystal, your story in Love is a Battlefield was great. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. I love it. I, I really love Blue Snowman, so it was fun to bring them mm -hmm. back. <clears throat> um, Nicholas suggests that we give the dog Daka crystal teeth. Mm. Yeah, because what she really needs is a sonic bark attack. <laughs> right. right. Or, the ability to bite through anything. Or, <laughs> gosh, what if she mutates and grows normal-sized legs? Oh, no. Then there oh, would be no, no. stopping it. Oh, actually, just really, <laughs> really long and tall. Ones, like, like a T-Rex with long arms. <laughs> but like a, a giraffe dog. Now I am invincible. <laughs> and not a lot of people realize this, but the Corgi is the final evolutionary phase of the Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> uh, that makes a lot of sense. You know, and I've been, because, Crystal, because of uh, my uh, proximity to your Corgis, I've you kind of looked them up to see kind of what they can do and what they're all about. And um, mm -hmm. they are... Um, they're a lot crankier than I realized. <laughs> they are pretty cranky. <laughs> That's, um, they are, yeah, they are pretty cranky. So <laughs> they're, you know, they're a herding breed, and herding breeds in general have a lot of attitude and a lot of smarts. Mm -hmm. and well, the, the drill sergeants of dogs, you know. Kind of. They're, 
They're like the loose cannon dogs on the edge. Mm -hmm. the, exactly. Exactly. They've got a mission. The, the bomb is about to go off. They've got to get to the top of the Yakisoba building. They don't have time, they don't have time for you to want to do another thing. They're going to herd you up the stairs with them. Um, you know, the other thing that we got mm -hmm. is a really good question. From you know, because what we do, and this is exactly what we do, we are um, listeners. We're kind of like I would say your tabletop role play game therapists, right? Oh. We kind of. <laughs> I'm not saying you know necessarily it's a good thing, but uh, I think it is. Um, I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll die on that sword, but um, uh, but we listen to what people say, and they have some great sort of. Uh, notions and sometimes mm -hmm. we have to disabuse, disabuse them of, uh, of a particular notion but um, I, you know when people ask us questions on Facebook or um, the YouTubes or you know really anywhere on the street as we're walking around mm -hmm. um, you know which is a service we also provide yes yeah, it's, it's weird that people keep stopping me in the grocery <laughs> store asking me how to tweak their bills mm -hmm. right? they're like if this cabbage was fighting this Carrot, <laughs> how would we stat them? Yeah, they're like, broccoli is OP. Yeah, right. Um, but we did get a question, and um, yes. I am uh, vamping as I roll, as I scroll for it. Um, but as I do that, <laughs> hey, did uh, did I forget, or am I, am I, am I um, having some kind of a relic to another uh, sort of timeline or some kind of... Uh, you know, moment where I'm remembering that some of the stat, or when we talk about some of the spaces that are going to be within Freedom City, that they're actually going to be about some of the patrons, like uh, uh, in roles. Some of them. Some of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, patrons, patrons who contribute at the prime level, we're going to start introducing them in Earth Prime, in products, mm -hmm. in adventures, in. Uh, some of these articles. It depends on what people, like where people want to show up. Gotcha. And that makes sense. And so I, I just kind of want to balance that out. Like, don't expect everybody that, you know, Crystal and Steve are just going to stop the world and then write you into, uh, you know, every aspect <laughs> of things. Um, oh, not yet. But it's coming. Yeah, exactly. We're heading in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Small bites. Um, so our friend from YouTube said this. Hey, mm -hmm. would you all go over the tactical roles in super teams oh. and maybe apply them to known super teams as an example yeah sure we can do that i mean so the um the tactical roles are defined in the super team handbook um and we break them down into uh into six primary tactical roles uh which That's are seven. assault um uh, is it seven did yep. i miss one Okay, so oh, I've got no, assault six, control. This is a full column illustration. I... Assault control, flex, intelligence, protection. protection, transport. Which one am I missing? Nope, that's all of them. I, I caught. I thought a full column illustration was. Oh. Was a character sure. concept. Sure. Well, I guess there's the you know the posing. <laughs> you know, tactical role, you yeah, know, just yeah. looking the good face. and being distracting. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. Finger posing. I do that. <laughs> so, you know, like, uh, it, it works out really conveniently that um, teams and superhero comics often break down into these, you know, sort of tactical, different tactical roles. Yeah, um, they have different things they contribute to a fight. It's not that everybody on the Avengers has, you know, energy beams. Mm-hmm. But it translates really well over to gaming because then it gives each character in a team different things to do in the middle of a, a combat encounter so far as that goes. So, I mean, how do we, do we want to go through the, the tactical roles and talk about different yeah. characters who sort of embody that uh... or break down a team? I guess let's break down a team. Like, I think the most straightforward is going to be like the Fantastic Four because everyone has very straightforward. Oh, I was going to suggest Power Pack. <laughs> you could do that too, <laughs> actually. I'm just trying to stump I, you too. It's been so long since I've read a Power Pack comic. I know, I know. Oh, the new one is so good. Oh, is it good? Oh, nice. They it really is. Really good. Yeah, yeah. 
I would say shockingly good. Yeah. But then Louise Simonson. Right. Oh, hey, real fast, I want to say, um, uh, hey, Alex Thomas, always good to see you. Very, very good to see you. I'm looking here. Um, oh, wow. Jason, good to see you. Um, Sean, I see that wall of text, and I will bookmark it. Um, lots of good questions as well. Uh, if, as you folks are joining us, if you want to share some um, uh, questions and thoughts, know that we will try to get to them, but we do always save them, and we put them on a wall that we call ha-ha mm -hmm. if we can't answer them. So <laughs> sorry to interrupt. All right. So how would we break down the Fantastic Four? Uh, gosh. Well, I'm going to say, I mean, the obvious is uh, Human Torch, definitely mm -hmm. your protection or your assault character. Right. I mean, he's the one with the most overt, like, combat focused powers. Mm -hmm. He's got flight in there as well, but for the most part, he's rushing in, throwing fireballs everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole point of the assault concept is I'm going to focus all of my abilities and advantages and powers on doing damage in a mm -hmm. fight or you know right afflictions or what whatever have you right uh and you've got the thing who's sort of an assault character um because clobbering time yeah um, but he's also kind of like he's the of, one who puts himself in harm's way right. he's got so he's kind of protection he's kind of high utility super strength i think he's more flex than anything mm -hmm. like he's He's got piloting skills. He's got intimidation. He's like the jovial face of the group. Mm -hmm. He just kind right. of fills a lot of shoes and he's really good in a fight, but he doesn't have the, you know, the face-to-face -face, like combat focus that Human Torch does necessarily. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And then, I mean, Invisible Woman is really obviously protection. She makes force fields. Her mm -hmm. actions on any given turn are mostly protecting the crowd, protecting her teammates. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. she's she's basically built off the deflect and create powers. Absolutely. And she's also the transport character of the team in many oh, ways right. when yeah. it comes to carrying everybody around. And I mean, Mr. Fantastic, I don't know, kind of a control character because he's big mm -hmm. on... I mean, he's he's the one who determines tactics. He's the one who spots like weaknesses in enemies' defenses. He's the one yep. whose powers are all about kind of maneuvering the battlefield and denying certain combatants like mm -hmm. where they can go or. Yep, and of course he's literally the intelligence character, as far yeah. as that goes. I was going to say he's a little bit of a know-it-all. Alex Thomas says, um, in quotes, "It's getting clobbered so the others don't." Time doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> it's true <laughs> but that is often the thing's role is he's he is he is really the tank that's you know, right of yeah. the team yeah. and he gets out in front and is the one who takes the hits so that other people don't have to yeah i mean part of the problem with trying to use comic book characters is how they operate in combat is radically different depending on who mm -hmm. who's writing them like yes. batman he's an assault character because he can outfight anybody. He's the intelligence character because he is the incredibly good detective who solves every problem. He mm -hmm. is the control character because he's the tactician on the Justice League and the outsiders who tells everybody, you know, how to best apply their skills. Yep. Uh, Jason says uh, Hulk versus Thing is an e uh, is an evening match. Do you think it's an even? I, I, Hulk always just seems so incredibly fantastically, you know powerful i mean again it's it depends on who's writing them depends on who's writing them yeah exactly like oh that's true yeah the thing tends to show up when the hulk is already down like the fantastic four get called in to deal with the hulk when he's already like on the most wanted list and he's already been smacked a couple of times by the military or somebody else mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. the thing is usually coming in when the Hulk's already taken a few slugs across the chin. And at yep. his most dangerous as well. A um, couple things here. Oh, Nicholas, thank you so much. Nicholas says, y'all, the Super Team book is an awesome purchase. Oh, um, Now, uh, they have a freaking, a freaking pow power changer, or do you mean ranger teams? Oh, yeah, power we do. ranger team. We do. Uh, are they called the Power Tangers? <laughs> oh gosh, I can't even remember. This uh, is uh, a must Magna buy. Force. 
Ah, uh, that's right. That's and then guess who came in and said, "Isn't that the Magnum Force?" I will give you one guess who came in with the correct. Uh, Is it a pook? It was Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, and we will. Uh, I, I know, Nicholas, I like to give you a little bit of the business um, because you're friend, your family. And we, we like to tease our friends and family, our, our loved ones. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. do we want to go over the tactical roles? I think I think maybe you had the best idea of going over the tactical roles and it. thinking of a couple mm -hmm. of yeah. existing mm -hmm. examples. We could talk about that. I mean, so assault is certainly the most straightforward uh, of the roles as far as that goes. Like you said, it's it's pretty much direct damage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, attacks of various kinds, mm -hmm. uh, the the things that are going to take down opponents as quickly as and as large a number as possible for the most part you know um so uh, you know any hero who's focused on uh you know either having a lot of strength or a big mm -hmm. energy blast or the like is kind of an assault character oh gosh so i am suddenly blanking for some reason my brain keeps going to namor but i know that's not right <laughs> He, um, he always had sort, sort of, of Hawkeye uh, mm -hmm. would be a good example. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's got a lot of combat options, but they're almost all about like taking people down one at a time or or sometimes in yeah. large groups. Yeah. Cyclops. You yeah, know, Cyclops is really is... more control. Like he's yeah. his powers aren't his powers are very assault based. True. Yeah, I mean, his tactical role yeah. is primarily control because he's the he's the tactical leader. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason has a question. What type of heroes are good for the support role? And we can kind of unpack that as we kind of move through that. But Nicholas also would like us to know that he is an assault character at a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, for con I mean, good support roles are, are your control characters, your protection characters, your intelligence characters. Mm -hmm. uh, characters whose big shtick is either keeping teammates from getting hurt, patching them up, or mm. creating like a favorable circumstance. Like if everyone in your party can see in the dark, or you have the ability to give everyone the power to see in the dark, and you have the power to create darkness, then you're, you're giving everybody on your team a, a big boost in the fight. Right. And we have some uh, some of the, uh, the advantages in the in the core book look at that sort of a thing, but we go into in the super team book many more team advantages and the like that are really focused on that kind of of team support, basically where the team really works together as greater than the sum of its parts. I gotta tell John Polajak weighs in. Um, uh... Yeah. Duh. As far as the pro uh, the Project Freedom Team, Ninth Airborne is Air Cavalry and Rescue Specialist. Fortress of America is Team Brick and also a PR mm -hmm. base. Queen of Hearts is Assault, and the Goon Sweeper, Weather Weather <laughs> Mistress. I love that. That is just the best. Mm -hmm. Who are you? I'm Weather <laughs> Mistress. Uh, is an Area Effect Specialist. Yeah, I like it. Uh, yep. Nate Robinson's Team Pride. Magic hero, uh, magic heroes are great supports as Alex Thomas. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And I had, I had a lot of fun in a third edition game before I joined the the actual team uh, of a character whose only superpower was invisibility, but she had all of the team support advantages. So even though you know mm -hmm. she wasn't taking down super villains on her own, every turn she had, you know, uh, the setup advantage she could use to keep people dazed or or pass on the bon benefit of being taunted or uh, mm -hmm. she could inspire everyone or she could use leadership to help allies shake off uh, uh, conditions. conditions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that kind of character can really make the difference between success and failure for a lot of uh, the team's efforts. You know, I'm yeah, looking was... at this. Uh, uh, David Body also says uh, Marvel's uh, Nightcrawler is a good support character, and I mm -hmm. I love Nightcrawler so much. Like I, I think we're yeah. married. Yeah. Uh, so the other roles are control, who are your mm -hmm. your tactical leaders, your people whose big focus right. is giving the whole 
the whole team an advantage somehow or <laughs> manipulating the battlefield in right. your favor like because because um, really when we say control we're referring to control of the battlefield yeah. basically so that's your cyclops who's got mm -hmm. you know inspire and leadership so right. not every turn is he you know letting loose with this optic blast he's directing people he's arguing mm -hmm. with wolverine he's you know helping <laughs> right. teammates shake off conditions uh, yep. but storm is also a really good example mm. of a control character because she can she can create weather conditions that take flying opponents down she can uh, basically change the battlefield to take away enemy advantages crystal mm -hmm. uh, and and steve is there ever are there ever control characters that aren't sort of that standard issue leader like storm and cyclops i'm are there control characters that are um are they generally yeah. is is sort of your role specific to the kind of I the mean, team dynamic does that like arguably scarlet witch is very are, is a mm -hmm. control character since her her oh, basic yeah. hex bolts don't really do damage they debuff mm -hmm. uh, true so they're a they tend to be about like undoing what the enemy just did or, you know, uh, God. Who else? Yeah. So you don't necessarily yeah. have to be team captain, but you can mm -hmm. have no. a very specific yeah, like sort of localized. Leech. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Leech from the Morlocks, just shutting down an opponent's powers. That is, yeah, I, I big love control the moves. moves. Love yeah, that big move. control energy there. Um, hey, Matthew Tyler says, um, how do Crystal and Steve, anywho, I'd love to see, <laughs> sorry, that just made, anywho, I'd love to see updated stats for Sprite and Spriggan from Worlds of Freedom and maybe a way okay. to incorporate them into the current Earth Prime universe. You know, Matthew, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're a, you're a Patreon person. You better raise some, you better raise that up. You better send it up the chain over there in Patreon land. Um, oh, here's something weird. Logical said, uh, "Logical over on YouTube, and I love when our, our YouTubians, as they are called, or as, as they are known universally, <laughs> the YouTubians, uh, uh, Logical shares found out the other day that Wolverine isn't based around an actual Wolverine, but the hairy frog, aka the Wolverine frog, a frog that breaks the bones <laughs> in its paws to create claws. Is that true, Logical? Because that is the best lie if it's not true. I mean, that is." That is an actual frog. Right, that is I, I don't, a thing. I have to imagine the frog is named for Wolverine rather than the other mm -hmm. way around. Right. Logic or bring the and links. Fun, I, but I'm guessing. I'm not fun fact about Wolverine was originally he was based on an actual Wolverine to the point where his origin was supposed to be that he was a Wolverine evolved into human form. Oh. Uh, like um, but that Wolverine. apparently went out the window you know, pretty quickly, along with the notion uh, that Chris Claremont had that Wolverine was originally a teenager uh, under that uh, mask until John Byrne drew him unmasked, uh, and he oof. clearly was not. He was clearly like a very grumpy 45-year-old man. Yep. Logical, I don't know. I think you might have just shared the most interesting fact of the program, and for that, <laughs> you get nothing. Oh, yeah, but... hang on. I've got some photos here of me with a Wolverine frog. <laughs> <laughs> Here, look in my pocket. I have. <laughs> That's great. Um, no, no, no. I get it, Logicor. Yeah, Logicor just says I. I just mean uh, what the powers were based on. No, I mean that's just mm -hmm. that is really. Um, Sean Duggan shares a link to the hairy frog, <laughs> and um, contrary to popular belief, it's not hairy. The frog. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. It. I, it <laughs> It looks like kind of you, kind of looks. Wolverine. You can't share pictures with Troy midstream. No, it just really can't. People, what I mean, come on, shiny How things, we, right? Haven't we known each other long enough? That's how you derail me. Um, <laughs> and then Sean comes in with some very uh, uh, facts. Wolverine uh, also originally had his claws in his gloves, not as an inherited part of him. True that. To that, well, thank you for the little uh, deviation. Um, really, more of an X twenty three fan. <laughs> yeah, mm. same Z's. Um, uh, Honestly, really more of a Honey Badger fan. <laughs> you know, you know, I like Honey Badger because mm. Honey Badger Fun. just no, no, <laughs> no different Honey Badger. <laughs> oh, 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 the one that does Honey the... Badger, as in X twenty three is little sister, not Honey oh, Badger, the, not the actual one... badger, actual from animal that, yeah. that doesn't give a. 
Although, uh, fun fact, Honey Badger does have a pet wolverine, Jonathan. Oh, see, we are just all kinds of facts today. Um, mm -hmm. uh, David Body, who, thank you, sir, for getting us back on track, for you also thank get you. nothing but uh, recognition <laughs> and our love, but says, uh, as, as a last example, the Wonder Twins from the Super Friends are support characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Largely. What would that make Gleek? Gleek is a support character of a support character. He's a secondary Gleek's, or a tertiary Gleek's support strictly character. Strictly intelligence. Right. Uh, He's the one who's always pointing things out. Like, mm -hmm. what's that Gleek? An important clue that we've all overlooked. There so here's go. here's something interesting. Uh, uh, Sean sharing a a, a deep uh, a deep regret personally for teenage reveals that never were. I still regret <laughs> that they didn't go with the original plan that Mister Sinister was a kid trying to play mm -hmm. the part of a villain, explaining that would why have been he's so all, extra. That would have made a lot more sense. Yep. The original notion was that Mr. Sinister was the projection of what a kid thought a supervillain was like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, well, first of all, yeah, uh, Logic War, I'm with you. Gleek, sorry. Get out of here. Your Gleek is the worst. Um, also, just the name Gleek. Yuck. Uh, Nicholas Morrow says, is the flex rule just a jack of all trades? Uh, yeah, the flex rule is basically a little bit of everything. Somebody can change their strategy on the go. It's a lot of your characters built with big uh, arrays. Rays, yeah. So like magic characters tend to fall into this role because they've usually got a couple of really decent assault spells. They've usually got some battlefield control style spells. Mm -hmm. uh, they've usually got some weird intelligence style spells like remote viewing or uh, buffs that help sort of uh, heal or, or guard their team. They can usually teleport whole groups. Yep. Same with the, the really flexible gadgeteer types. Mm -hmm. Nicholas asks, is Spider-Man a flex? Uh, I mean, it's harder with solo heroes because they mm -hmm. have to fill a lot of different roles. Right. Uh, usually when he's on a team, Spider-Man is a little bit of a salt, but more of a control character because his mm -hmm. whole thing is, tends to be taunting villains and sliding right. them, Plans. tripping them, yeah. distracting them. Right. Uh, he'll get in a really good punch every now and then, but he's mostly there to outwit villains and keep them busy and distracted long enough for the heavy somebody, hitters to come in. Yeah, somebody like Thor to come in and Jason oh, Thor is a great assault character. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, uh, Jason Wallman says on the, uh, let's see, Gleek is a heroic support animal. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Now, is that a designation or just his opinion about how awesome Gleek is? I think I think it's just his opinion. So, Jason, some of us understand that Gleek is useless. Right. Yeah. I think that this is a challenge to our authority. That's not true. No monkey is useless. That's only true. people. I yeah. Only people are useless. Uh, Alex Thomas says on the other end of the spectrum we have uh, mm -hmm. Mister Nitzelplik is did I say that right? Nitz, yeah. Nitzelplik mm -hmm. who is a non-supportive character. <laughs> Yes, yes. The, the very definition of not supportive. He's really not supportive. Same is, with Mr. Sinister. Not well, supportive. it's funny nope. you bring that up because Stephen Jones says Mr. Sinister is a drag king villain. Well, Sinister's fashion sense has been kind yeah. of overemphasized of late in spite he's of him like, he's more not like really a goblin having any. king. Yeah. Uh, Logiker says, I'd say he's support often using his whips and quips to tie up the big bad so that Thor and Iron Man can have the you know, can bring in the the thunder. I mean the the control role is the the support role that everyone mm -hmm. keeps talking about. Yeah. 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 I mean there's support's kind of split between whether you're affecting the environment and your opponents or protection where you're, you know, specifically guarding people, healing people, things like right. that. Well, uh, Nicholas asked, where would, um, where does Green Lantern fit into the, into that math? Into he's pretty character. much a classic flex character in a lot of ways. Yeah, he's got the big array, he can fly, he's got blasts, he's got these tools for problem solving. Yeah. Usually <clears throat> a wide variety of skills, he can create constructs to move the whole team around. Hey, um, folks in the chat, I want to establish a, a norm that I think uh, it just strikes me as something so 
helpful for you know me, and that is uh, let's do what Nicholas Morrow is doing. And if you've got a question and you want to get my attention, put a big question in brackets, and then I can track it. That is um, that very be. yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. Nicholas. You, you are we're just building community as we are. That, that will help Troy's scrolling hand it really tremendously. Will. It really will. It really will. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Jordan Taylor asks, "What role could an could an Earth control character be?" Uh, I mean, it really depends on how you play them up. Mm -hmm. uh, I could it be, does. yeah, very strict assault where you focus on bashing things with rocks or creating earthquakes to to trap people or crush people. Uh, it what? can be like a very classic protection role where you're using walls of stone to contain people, to block attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it could be, they can have some control effects if they're they're changing the conditions of the ground around the battlefield. Like what about magma? Remember magma? Mm -hmm. New Mutants magma? Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, magma was mostly a pretty much straight up assault character yeah, for okay. the most part because she was really just about like blowing just things up. Cause and the yeah 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 um, makes me think about empath who is also very much an assault character mm -hmm. and uh, on multiple levels in a disturbing <laughs> way. Alex Thomas says I will comply disembodied meat bag Troy. No, it's disembodied meat moisture. I'm just disembodied. I don't have any meat. I'm meatless. He's, he's just the moist. Just, no, I'm all the moist, none of the meat. <laughs> Nicholas says it's a technique I learned from another great Game Master YouTuber. Um, well, you tell your friend Game Master YouTuber that uh, they're pretty smart. Um, Anson Sauer uh, says, off topic, what can we expect from the next Astonishing Adventures? Astonishment Adventure movie. <laughs> astonishment uh, and adventure. Yeah, yeah, definitely some astonishment, a little bit of adventure. Uh, the next one is actually a quirk-focused adventure. Ooh. There you go, Anson. Great question. I'm glad that you uh, you uh, chimed in there. Let's see what else do we have. Um, oh, Cosmo, who's Cosmo? Uh, and uh, so is Cosmo the Adam family. Cos Cosmo is the Gleek of the uh, Earth Prime universe. Uh, he's our blue teleporting moon monkey. Yeah. Uh, so that's from. Did I lose everybody? Uh, you're back. Nope. You're back. I don't know if it was me oh, or good. you, but uh, you momentarily time shifted I, there. Yeah, sorry. I Crystal's think it's jumping around me. We're having a we're having a time storm here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I was very briefly, I was very briefly on a pirate ship. Oh, nice, mm -hmm. fun. Does anybody want a doubloon? Because I don't know what to do with these, and I can't report them on my taxes again. I think you're supposed to. Right. Like, you're, you're like not again. I think you're supposed to, to take a bite out of it and be like. I matey. Um, Apu <laughs> says, let's not discuss moist meat. I, I will not. I will. We weren't until somebody else brought it up again. Right, Apu, <laughs> moist meat. Thank We'd you. We moved on. <laughs> right. We have. Uh, Alex Thomas is so excited for a Quirk adventure that it was in all caps. Right. Quirk is a, is a ton of fun. I mean, for the game master. He's, he's terrible yeah. for the players. <laughs> but the, yeah, the title of the adventure is Into the Idiot Box. And uh, I basically just gave Jason Keeley the concept for the adventure and told him to go nuts. Uh, mm -hmm. You might know did. him if you play Starfinder. Yeah, he absolutely went nuts. <laughs> He's the, the lead developer over on Starfinder. And it is just this cavalcade of wonderfully awful 80s tropes. And if you've ever dreamed of dumping your mutants and masterminds characters into an Alfrey run, you were gonna love hasn't. this adventure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so timely with, you know, WandaVision so prominent in the, you know, zeitgeist right now. Complete accident, I assure you. <laughs> I, I want to dispel any rumors that I am in any way competent. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will hear no more of that. Back to moist meat. Your, your uh, actions continue to disprove <laughs> that theory, Crystal. I know, yeah. Your expertise that is clearly on display in all things that you do and say. <laughs> Uh, Sean Duggan says in a statement, absolutely love playing Toys Will Be Toys with my players. Quirk mm. made for a fun antagonist oh, nice. who was always just as powerful as he needed to be. That's fine. Alex Alex says, I will 100% be running that on a stream. And, uh, awesome. and nice. then Nicholas brings up WandaVision. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You're just going to take us off in a whole new thing, a whole new direction. 
Um, what time is it? Oh, good. Okay, we still have time. Yeah, sure. yeah we've still got 12 minutes. Yeah, we can do all kinds of stuff in 12 minutes. <laughs> You'd be amazed. <laughs> you really would be. But then, uh, who, who but yeah, the, what else have we got left? Intelligence <laughs> characters who are mm -hmm. your, like your detectives, your spies, your super geniuses. Mm -hmm. It's everybody who focuses on solving a problem by like looking at the parts and pulling them apart. Uh, mm -hmm. So this might be your gadgeteer characters, but it tends to be people who find the weaknesses in something like uh, mm -hmm. your psychic character who- Right. Oh, Crystal is time frozen again. Figures out the enemy team dynamic and picks away. Am I back? You're back, yeah. Yep, Hello? you're back. <laughs> oh, good. I was gonna say it, it also includes like your psychic character who picks away at the team dynamics and triggers enemy complications and things like that. And it's also the the super senses characters, you mm -hmm. know, who have the ability to pick up on information other characters might not. Yeah, these are the these are your characters who are really focused on finding narrative solutions to fights or using hero points to edit the scene. Uh, mm -hmm. Like we're we're fighting a guy who lights himself on fire. Can I trigger the sprinkler system? Uh, right. Real quick, hey, Sean, I, I definitely have your question. It's a, it's a great one, and I've got a bookmark, so don't you fret. Um, uh, it's, I'm sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and you know, using hero points instead of the scene is an important uh, mm -hmm. sort of thing for intelligence characters where you're actually creating the intelligence mm -hmm. that you're then conveying uh, to the team of saying, hey, there's this thing that my player has just created for us. <laughs> that I am now telling you about. <clears throat> See, Nicholas, oh, we answered that. your question before you even asked it. Because um, mm. Nicholas was wondering about how you uh, role play a super intelligent character when you know you maybe not be the brightest bulb in the room. Edit scene is a big tool in that regard. You know, if if you can if you can edit the scene as a player, and then you know basically the explanation is well, my character planned that mm -hmm. and always knew that that was going to happen. Uh, then you, your character is now smarter than you. Yeah, cunning is a mm -hmm. nice substitute for intelligence, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, Jason uh, asks a really great question, and I'm going to read it verbatim, um, which is, what about a team of non-powdered heroes? And how would that work? <laughs> a la oh, challengers well, uh, of the unknown. You see, non-powdered heroes aren't as popular because they're a lot more expensive to ship, and they don't have as long a shelf life. Uh, mm -hmm. see, it's true. See, uh, yeah. But, but they make such a mess. That fresh hero taste. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. You can't really just eat them in the car because they just get powder <laughs> all over the place. But uh, yeah, uh, non non powered heroes kind of fall into the same rules. It's just you lean more on advantages and gear. Like in the I, in the super team handbook, we have a whole team of super agents in the back who are pulling off leverage style schemes, and you've got uh, you've got your main character or your leader type, Jesse Baker, who is very much control. She's all about manipulating what's going on in the heist or directing people in combat or mm -hmm. providing, providing assist bonuses to her teammates. Right. Uh, you've got Lila, who is your, your classic con woman, whose whole shtick is uh, confusing people on the battlefield. Things like, <laughs> uh, things like uh taunt or mm -hmm. or fainting those are all classic control moves and when you right. say fainting you mean like uh the f-e-i-n-t like fainting. the fencing yeah. move not yeah. you know passing out yeah because i do the other uh, yeah. yeah you've got lee who is the hitter who he is strict assaults he's strong he carries weapons he's got a bunch of advantages that are focused on hitting things harder or more frequently mm-hmm uh, you've got Maddie Scogans, who is your intelligence character. He's the hacker. He is, yep. or no, sorry, he's the the thief character. So mm -hmm. he's the one who's all about breaking into things. And in a fight, he is very much the one who is trying to trip people up, trying to confuse people, trying to, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, classic, kind of classic flex because he can throw mm -hmm. a solid punch. Right. And then uh, Hamid is your hacker who his whole shtick is, again, intelligence and understanding the battlefield, uh, mm -hmm. manipulating electronic systems to make distractions or lock people out or. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. the rules fit non-powered uh, characters just as well uh, as far as that goes. Jordan Taylor asks an interesting question. Does Earth Prime deal with fairies? Like, is there a fae oh, kind of, you know, oh, yeah. allegory? Yeah. Uh, there is an entire fairy dimension, uh, yeah. as a matter of fact. Uh, we talk about it in Book of Magic, uh, touch upon it in um, Atlas Earth. of Earth Prime in a couple of spots. Um, yeah, so, the, yeah, the Fomorians, most definitely. The Fomorians in Ireland are yep. tied to it. Uh, there are a couple of American yeah. things tied to it. I, I know it's got some connections they, to Emerald City. Yeah, the Krypton yeah. clans have some fae Hill. Uh, involved, connected to them. We have a yeah, half fairy student. The clans in... are weird, and I'd love more information on them. Yeah, they'd be fun to do some more with, actually. Yeah. Jason says, I thought we were doing, uh, we were going to talk about the characters from Milestone, like static icon and more diverse cultures and how they fit into that to me is like we should we should unpack that for a whole program i like it mm. yeah um, that, yeah that, that might topic me. deserves a lot more time yeah, than we've got I, sure does sadly i i really only know about static mostly mm -hmm. because of the cartoon <laughs> logic or shared earlier when we were talking about um non-powdered um uh <laughs> heroes uh said in all caps powdered toast man and, Powder um, Toast Man is a classic flex character. Yeah, mm -hmm. I literally I flex because he can literally flex. And his, he, doesn't he kind of flex his buttocks and then fart out a window when he's? <laughs> uh, no, no, he he flexes onto his face and then toast pops uh, out the window, out the flying window. feet first. I see, I see. But I hear, I heard that, and then Logical shares that their superpower is that uh, they can make people read the words in the voice that he that they are trying to share. So good news, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, effective. Um, so there is a very interesting question um, from one of the Shans. And you know when Shans mm -hmm. ask a question, that it's got to be it's got to be something like uh, Sean has worked uh, himself into a corner and he needs help because mm -hmm. you know so he needs a ruling. Yes, tell us, Sean, how are you? He's <laughs> come to Heroes Court. Dun 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 Okay, it says, uh, when we get to miscellaneous questions, which is where we're at right now, we should do a little mm -hmm. we should call this Heroes Court or like something. Um that, that'll be a, a segment. Uh, a kind of parallel to the hero point discussion from before of uh, mm -hmm. prior programs. Uh, do please um head over to our YouTubes and watch and listen to them all. Give them a thumbs up and subscribe. Do you feel like people ought to get a hero point for running out of ammo or having a gun jam for equipment? Some text indicates that one of the mm -hmm. drawbacks of the equipment is that it can be taken away without mm -hmm. recompense. Mm -hmm. But then it yep. says that running out of ammo or having a gun jam is a small C complication. My personal philosophy is that devices and powers get a hero point for that sort of thing but that you get what you pays for with equipment. So having mm -hmm. to take action to reload uh, doesn't necessitate a hero point, although saying that the gun blows up and needs to be replaced is a different thing and more long-term impact, so maybe a hero point. I mean, it depends on how much it impacts them that round. Yeah, like if exactly. you're taking away their standard action for the round, like you say they go to shoot and the clip is empty, and then they just don't get to do anything that turn. That's usually something that earns a hero point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, kind of the same. Oh, I was oh, going to say. No, that. I just I agree. <laughs> yeah, kind of the same philosophy of if you use your action that turn to help bystanders, I mean you're basically trading your action for a hero point. Uh, but if you're just saying like you fired the last round from your gun, you're going to have to use your move action next turn to you know slide in a new clip that's fine you're not mm -hmm. you're not ambushing them with an empty gun or you can be like and the fight is over by the way you're out of ammo so your gun is going to be useless until you can find more uh, like so that that is, definitely falls into the territory of equipment is there yeah. a place where the uh, where the shans can go to sort of read like that <laughs> that well and i just I, I only say this because the stronger we make the shans the stronger we all are <laughs> Uh, but when it is time to like, you know, in doing that measure, it's a little bit difficult, or at least it feels like, and correct me, please, um, it, mm -hmm. that it seems like having um, 
every sort of uh, nook and cranny mapped with rules, that mm -hmm. this is one of those like weigh the scales of you know how debilitating you know that the, then you assign you know yes. points based on that rather than trying to get too nook and cranny, but maybe also having some fun with it. If it's not something that is, you know, it's just an irritant, you know, or, or a delay. I mean, role playing game systems are like time dilation at the speed of light. <laughs> <clears throat> the closer you get to the speed of light, the more time slows down. So nice. that by that very last <clears throat> millionth of a percent, it will take you forever to get eventually to that, you know, final 100%. Role-playing game systems are like that. The more, the more the game system tries to define everything, mm -hmm. the more the system slows down and to the point where it becomes completely unusable, uh, which is why uh, even in a system that defines a lot, like Mutants and Masterminds does, there's still a tremendous amount of room for the game master to decide what is the best application of that rule in that situation rather than saying, here is a complete and total list of everything that can earn you a hero point. And if it's not on this list, you can't have one. Yeah, and, and Sean, I think that's what, again, and I, and I we always give you a little bit of a business, but the fact that you kind of sussed that out in the context of language here was mm -hmm. a little soft and language there's a little soft, is you, you uncovered sort of, uh, you know, uh, the heart of, tabletop role play games you know like there is that mm -hmm. that space that you need to kind of do your thing um yep, absolutely uh, this is interesting as well um uh where did it go yeah i mean go equipment ahead. is mostly about giving people more low-powered options mm -hmm. uh like a device is kind of up there in terms of power and flexibility uh and equipment's about having little options to make life easier so yep. Most of the weapons available are well below what most superheroes can put out in terms of damage or effect. Uh, and the trade-off is just, you know, you really can't realistically expect to have a gun that does 10 or 12 damage. Right. And, you know, sometimes your GM can screw with you by having your gun get knocked off a catwalk or things like that. A couple interesting things have popped up. Um, Jason Waltman says, uh, that might is uh fey um john polajack says bees the beautiful is from the fey dimension as uh are the snow queen mm -hmm. of the fables gang and her cousin oh, wicked yeah. licorice of the candy gang yep mm -hmm. um thank you got lots of that. fairies running around yeah absolutely uh, <laughs> as per the norm we weren't even talking about johnny rock yesterday. right <laughs> Uh, uh, Pook, I'm not sure what this means, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, uh, Pook says, uh, cough, cough, Pathfinder, cough, cough. Um, <laughs> cough, cough, Pathfinder, cough, cough. I, I don't know. It seemed like there's a moment to, to kind of throw some shade in here. Um, I, mean, I, I have no, I have no truck. I have no issue mm. with That's all a timing thing, though. It kind of loses something. In your it does, it. yeah. So it's either really super mean, or I just sound like a dummy, or both. Um, uh, Sean, you're welcome. Sean was mainly I was unsure of the intent of that text since it seemed mildly contradictory. Um, I uh, yeah, absolutely. That is uh, that is very true. Catherine the Red serves as uh, serves the unseelie Fay Court as well. Thanks, Alex Thomas. <laughs> Still listing. Oh, Catherine the Red. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be fun to kind of expand on what the Fay do in. Uh, mm. I think so. In Earth Prime. I mean, keep that in mind for art, an article series in uh, in Pride Month. Yeah. Yes. yes. How cool would that be? Um, I love it. I love it. Uh, well, listen to this, friends. We have packed. We have managed to fill an entire hour with fun, frolic, fay, friends, moist meats. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell me about what you fill with moist meat ever again. Yes. Wow. No. Wow. Now and it's I... proof that going over and over in your head, don't do it, does not work on Troy at all. Oh, it doesn't. And I'm telling you, my inner monologue is just a long screech. <laughs> <laughs> trying to say stop, but to no avail. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like, I, I feel like Troy's inner monologue is just one of those parrots, like, bobbing along with a metal song. Oh, that is exactly it. That is apt. That, is that very, sounds pretty accurate. Yeah, it, it does, inside, too. <laughs> um, again, you know, a, a highlight of my week, it's, uh, 
you know, our time to get to hang out together on Mondays has truly um, turned my Mondays into something totally different than it was prior. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of opportunity to connect and have some, um, uh, you know, some real philosophical dialogue around, you know, <laughs> what are heroes and um, and then also, you know, to make space for those moments like, you know, let's talk about moist meats. You know, maybe we just want to explore that a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. but only here oh. can we do such a thing. And your support as well, friends, has allowed us to have a Gangbusters Patreon, which you can check out at uh, patreon.com slash mutants, A and D, masterminds. Uh, there's some great stuff cooking, uh, lots of More fun. coming. Yes. Uh, how, you two, do you have something you'd like to share uh, before we uh, skadoodle? Uh, I mean... We're coming up on a one-year anniversary of the first lockdown, so go easy on yourself. It's been a really long 2020. Oh, yes, indeed. A couple light bulbs just went off. I'm like, that's why I'm feeling like this. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, also, you live in Seattle, and it's February, which means you have not seen the sun in three months. That's mm -hmm. really true. There was a little sliver of sun the other day, and I was just like, <sighs> it, like angels were singing. Um, this is, in Seattle at least, February is objectively the worst month it mm -hmm. is it is <clears throat> especially because you can almost start to smell spring it's almost here like um, the sun or the uh the snowdrops are starting to bloom i so. saw mm -hmm. that i saw that and then they got maybe maybe it's a little early because they got a little you know <laughs> they got uh, buried yeah they got buried and got a little beat up um but I've, I've got my my seeds started for uh for planting in april so yeah I, looking I, forward okay. I just did an entire overhaul of my um, realizing that at some point we are going to have to leave our caves. Um, my, I have so many houseplants right now. I literally have like 30 to 40 houseplants. It is cur It's very green. I'll say that. Um, let's see here real quick. Uh, let's end on this. Jason Waltman asks, what adventure to start for a new GM and player in Mutants and Masterminds? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I mean, Rise of the Tyrant was specifically built to introduce the rules one at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a good option. Um, uh, you know what we can also find? There's some free um, PDFs that are up on uh, oh, yes. in, in, this, in the uh, store. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we'll tweet something about that. So make sure you're following us on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Power Play is also a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Power Play, yeah. It kind of Again, sort of walks you through <clears throat> fighting some minions, and then investigating, and then fighting a minor supervillain, and yeah. some role playing. Apook suggests any of the astonishing adventures are great starts into the game. Also, the core rulebook has two mini adventures in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are we have reached the end of our program. Um, Crystal, anything you want to share about <laughs> awesome stuff that you're doing or engaged in, or you know, have you? We've we've got an exciting project we're working on, but we can't say anything. We can't yet. Oh, talk gosh, about it. Can't. Involving involving cool stuff, but I can't say more than that. No, or, it's very yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> very um, very cool. But yeah. Take care of yourselves right now. Yeah. It's been it's been a rough year. It has been. Yeah, it's been rough. It's been rough. Um, but it certainly makes moments like this um, last hour uh, just a you know stand out. Um, Steve, before we roll, do you want to talk a little bit about your Patreon? Anything that you got cooking? Uh, folks can check out my icons Patreon over at patreon.com slash Steve Kenson. Um, so I just hit fifty two patrons nice. on there because so you're doing something good. you're getting you're getting things kind of moving and doing some stuff over there right yeah phenomenal yeah, and good so it's crystal Frazier. <laughs> and uh yeah oh here's another question um uh they this person saying they can't quite remember the name but it mm -hmm. is uh the hero name um they are a um they're a they're a talk show host on a call-in, in a Seattle-based call-in talk show. And they are made of a diamond-like material. That's their power. 
um, they can't quite um, remember what the what the right, name. I'm signing off now. There's a dog. I'm signing off, Troy. There's a dog and a cranky old man. Good night, everybody. The hero's name's Crystal Frazier. Good night.